my name is Emma Anderson. I'm the Director of Inclusive Education and Teaching Support here in CICS. And um, I have this idea to do a little mini seminar series for the winter, as long as we're you know, not in classes and kind of experiencing life differently for the next six weeks. Um, just about things that are not necessarily talked about in your classes. Um, so we've got four total. Uh, this is the first one. Um, the title is How to Survive Winter. So we're going to talk about how we uh, figure out how to be people in like cold, dark winter, pandemic, no classes, limited transportation, far from family, like, you know, the layers go on and on. So that's what we're going to do today. And then um, the next ones are going to be uh, Tuesday, January 5th is about stress and your brain. So talking about the neuroscience, like baby neuroscience uh, around um, how we experience stress and how to do better with stress. And then we've got another one on imposter syndrome. And um, honestly, I forget what the last one is. It's something, a uh, time management is the last one. Uh, so we'll talk about all of those things during this little series, but for today, we're going to be talking about winter and mental health and connection and all that good stuff. So let me go ahead and get my slides ready and share my screen with you. All right, so I'm just gonna preface this by these are just my ideas and you know, those of us who are here, we're gonna talk about your ideas too because uh, we've like many of us have done this before. Um, but if you haven't done a winter here in Amherst as a grad student, it's hard and that's normal. Um, it's really cold and dark, if, especially if you come from a climate uh, where it's warm most of the year um, or if you're closer to the equator, so like um, you experience more light more of the time, this is like really dark, like a lot of the time. It's getting better. Starting on Monday, it started to get better, but still it's really dark. Uh, and that is really hard for a lot of people. Uh, also your routine is gone. Uh, now that classes have ended, whatever semblance of a routine you had from working at home is out the window um, because now we're on vacation or winter session. And so having that routine being taken away is tricky. Uh, it's a pandemic, we're in isolation. Uh, and on top of that, we've just got, you know, the normal stress of being a grad student, being away from your family, maybe financial issues, uh, limited transportation. Uh, transportation in a pandemic is extra hard. So there are lots of reasons that it is hard. So what do we do about it? So I have four ideas, four major points. Major point number one is move your body. Um, we know that the relationship between our body and our brain is really significant. So um, when we can move our body regularly, then our brains are a little bit happier. Um, so try something new. Um, I think a lot of times, we say like, you should exercise. And that can sound scary or terrible to a lot of people, including me. I really hate the idea of like exercise. Um, I tried to start running this fall, it didn't go well. Um, so just trying a little bit every day, even if that's walking around your apartment, going for a short walk outside. Or uh, I liked this one, this is not a great, uh, website, but I liked what they chose. Um, yoga poses you can do from bed. Um, I'm sorry about all the ads. It's really terrible. Um, but I, I liked some of these poses that they chose. And I'll share these slides so that you have access to all of these links. Um, even if you're not going to get out of bed today, doing some stretching in your bed will help your brain feel better. Um, Exploring somewhere new outside. Everything looks different when it snows, as uh, if this is your first Amherst snow, um, 
I'm sure you're finding out that everything looks totally different and like beautiful in a really cool way. Um, so try going someplace outside, even if that's like just taking a walk from your house. Can you just like walk along the trails in your backyard? Um, can you walk along the sidewalk? Or if you have transportation to get to somewhere else, you might want to try a nature preserve. Um, I just picked this little list of places that um, offer snowshoeing trails, which often means that um, you can like get through snow trails um, or they're meant to be walked on in the snow. You don't have to have snowshoes necessarily like in this much snow, it's kind of nice um, if you have access to snowshoes, but you don't have to have them at all. Um, and this is a nice list of um, some nature preserves with winter trails. Uh, and then also, if you don't know what these are, um, uh, there are little like ice cleats that you can get to put on your shoes, like your regular shoes. Um, if you've never experienced snow before, or even if you have, and it's like freaky to, to walk in the snow, these little things can help. You can get them for like 15 bucks. Um, and, you know, I'm trying not to like offer too many things that you would have to buy or spend money on in order to survive this winter. But this is one thing that you might want to think about if you know that you're walking in icy conditions a lot or you want to walk more, but it's feeling like uh, too much in the winter. Point number two, keeping a routine. Um, so there are many ways to do this, but just having some semblance of a routine, even when you're on vacation, even that's if it's just like, I get out of bed at 9 a.m., I'm going to eat breakfast at 9.30, I'm going to eat lunch by one o'clock, I'm going to eat dinner at whatever time, or, you know, whatever you do with your day. Making that plan and having that routine or things that you do every day um, can help you keep in a pretty good frame of mind. Um, and this is an app that I use. Uh, it's called Habitica. It's free. Um, they, they call it Gamify Your Life. Um, and it's sort of based loosely around Dungeons and Dragons, um, but you enter in tasks that you wanna do every day, um, tasks that are good habits, things on your to-do list. And when you check them off, you get points and you can like get things for your avatar um, or like find chests or like um, cool, fun fantasy things like that. It really works for me, might not work for you, but it's another idea. Number three, make your living space a place you wanna be. Uh, I think that sometimes, well, I wouldn't say sometimes, but at the beginning of the pandemic, we were kind of like, all right, how long is this gonna last? We don't know how long we're gonna st be stuck at home. Um, and perhaps over the fall semester, you've let things get a little messy or you haven't really thought about your living space because you were so stressed from classes. So this might be a nice time to make your living space that place that you feel good about being. Uh, light is really super important, um, or it can be. For me, it really works well. If you like candles, that's great. Um, if you like those like fairy lights or Christmas lights, these things, um, those kind of like make a nice glow. Um, they also make these uh, light therapy lamps that are intended for um, seasonal affective disorder, which is a type of depression that you can get when it's really dark and cloudy outside. Um, and these emit a certain level of lumens and um, certain type of light that uh, research shows actually like can help you feel better um, if you're really feeling the lack of light. Uh, uh, redecorating your walls, uh, whatever art or decoration you have around, um, or if you want to find things online and print them out, or if you want to trade things with your friends or neighbors, um, just like making sure that your walls like really make you smile when you look at them. Um, and then things that just make you feel cozy and warm. Um, making sure you have access to your favorite blanket. Um, making sure that you 
are able to do laundry enough that your favorite pair of thick socks can be clean most of the time. Um, those tactile things or those warm things um, will really help you uh, feel happier. And then number four, the final one, um, is find new ways to connect with others. So the biggest thing that I hear people struggling with right now is isolation. I and mean, the isolation is just like getting thicker um, as we get into winter. Um, so we need to find new ways to connect with others. Maybe that's connecting with people in new ways that we already talk to, or maybe that's reaching out to new friends or finding other people to, to get to talk to. And this is one way by coming to the seminar, this is one way that you do it. Uh, a few ideas that I have for this, uh, one is random acts of kindness. Can you make little drawings and drop them off for your neighbors? Or even like small gifts, if that's your jam. Uh, there are some cool socially distanced events um, that are outside. I really like uh, Mass Audubon. Um, so like at the Arcadia Wildlife Sanctuary this Saturday, they're having, this is a kid's event, but like everybody's welcome. Um, they're having a Christmas bird count. Um, and then the signs of the season thing is at the same place. And this is about like the um, ecology of the area and um, winter animals, winter plants, that kind of thing. Uh, all of these you have to register for because they have hard limits so that you can actually observe social distancing. Um, but they're anywhere between free and 10 to 20 bucks. Um, so they are um, not super costly. Uh, and then they also have some uh, online series about wildlife, if that's your thing. Uh, sometimes learning about the area that you're currently living in, if it's an area that's new to you, can also feel like a good thing. Um, online board games. If you haven't already explored Board Game Arena, uh, they have a really great free plan. Um, and uh, you can play a whole bunch of different board games. Um, you can play with people all over the world that you don't know, or you can play with your friends. Um, I play with friends like every other Monday and every other Friday. Um, and that's been a really great way for me personally to, to get to spend time with people without just like staring at each other on a Zoom screen. Um, and maybe you're trying to eat something different. Like eating vegetables is like a really good thing that's also really hard to do. Um, maybe video chatting while you're cooking or swapping recipes. Um, just kind of some ideas to, to think about how to connect with other people. And then finally, um, remember that there is always help available. If you are feeling super isolated um, and just like having a hard time, remember that CCPH is there. Um, CCPH also has these really awesome online resources for mental health, just like apps you can download or places you can go to like learn about mindfulness or better sleep or different things like that. And then also I like to point out the crisis text line. Um, you, it's free. You can text it at any time. Um, I think sometimes people think like, oh, I can't use one of those like crisis lines because I don't feel suicidal. Um, well, this isn't just that, this is like, are you in crisis? Do you not know what to do? Um, and you're just having a really hard time. Um, you can text someone at this crisis text line and they will text you back um, and you can have a conversation and somebody can help you find resources. Um, so please do reach out um, if you're having a particularly hard day. And that, is all I have.